Yeah, here we are. So we're live. So it is that time on Friday when there's actually a bit of space in the in the week. Well, particularly now, actually, now the one six nine two uh, homeworks get released on Wednesday. It means I'm not worrying about a release tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, what we are looking at is on Monday this presentation of um, local support to some other people in the charity sector. And um, so we kind of want to make sure that we can present something that looks okay. Um, one of the things that I had thought to do uh, that I was mentioning in the in the meeting was uh, get I was thinking right get the data from the uh, live live site that was that was that was one of the and and uh, move on to my local machine so that in principle you know if people want to see it and, and there's like, oh hey Thomas Hello. Um, then I can run the entire thing on my um, Local machine, and that's that's all good. Uh, what I have done so far in that regard is I did just pull down um, the full Postgre database from the production Heroku, um, and I was thinking actually that that maybe gave us um, uh, maybe gave us uh, what was I going to say? Uh, a good opportunity to kind of finish up on the because we did a lot of post grade work, and and we got. I mean, you 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 were had you had more of a challenge on Windows there, Michael. But you ultimately uh, made some good progress subsequently. Was that right? Well, on Ubuntu, yeah, I have it running, I believe. Yeah. Um. Because what? Well, and what we? I guess I, I'm gonna try and find all the pieces of. The windows and different things. Let's rem get just close. Uh, I put the uh, instructions. In the yeah, right. And uh, for how to use peer authentication, it's called. Mm. Which is really just. Uh, it's only you can only use it for local connections, meaning on your, you know, within the same computer. And it right, relies right. on it relies on you being authenticated by, say, the kernel. Right. As you know, such and such user. Right, right. Yeah. So that and that, that well, that sounds like a more secure setup generally. The one we kind of hacked together in the the group meeting was was uh, putting yeah. a password in in the public repo. Yeah. Well, also relying upon the password. I mean, yeah. We need to kind of look at the whole password set up uh, no, I'm now I'm looking around for I think is this it yeah so this this was the right, okay, client meeting um, so uh, one thing we could just start on while I get my head to head around this is um, Thomas that that just taking one of these like uh, just, just taking this tagline and sticking that in the space um, oh and, hey Dennis good to have you with us um, do you, Thomas if, if you're uh, ready? Should yes. we just try and get that um, tagline into the the UI styling branch? Mm hmm Yes, sir. You wanna you wanna share your screen and yes. that's I mean mainly mainly for our benefit. So I mean because I think uh, you know you, you can, particularly me I haven't really been involved with um, the development of the Twitter Bootstrap things that you've been doing. So you know I would love to see. You know, you as you work on those. Um, Dennis, do you want to just check your audio? You want to kind of um, turn off the. Uh, you, you're muted at the moment because as soon as that, yeah, and uh, just try talking. We're not getting any. Are you audio. seeing my. I'm seeing your screen, uh, Thomas. Yeah, I'm just checking in with, uh, with Dennis. Yeah, yeah um, I can hear you. Okay, um, yeah, we can, we, okay. Can hear you we can hear you too, Dennis. Eventually, you'll want to change your G plus icon to something other than that kind of blue circle on top of a. Uh, somebody's body, but uh, oh, by the way, uh, go on, Michael. As I reported in uh, Scrum, I th I think I've had success with Rails four. Yeah, I saw, I saw, uh, yeah. Maps gem. I think it, it's just a matter of adding this uh, gem. Okay. That Haraku needs. Okay. To compile the assets correctly. Cool. That's interesting. Yeah, that will be interesting to have a. So that's kind of at. the last major roadblock that we had at least a couple months ago. Yeah, when we were looking at Rails 4. I mean, I think, um, I'm not sure, I'm not, yeah, uh, at the moment I'm not, I guess the main 
reasons to be moving to Rails 4 would just be to be staying up to date and, uh, and avoiding security issues. I'm, I'm wow. not aware yeah. of like a, cute, a bit some big in terms of the functionality that we deliver at the moment. I'm not. Uh, I'm not hearing uh, like this would be the big win from being on Rails 4. Uh, Rails 4 is pretty uh, evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Yeah, right. But I think um, so. The main the main change is in how it does its security. Right. For the model, it's no longer the duty of the model. It's now the duty of the controller. Right. So sure. active record itself has been changed, but out of their kindness, the Rails uh, team has created a gem that they're going to maintain for the 4.0 line, but not the right, 4.1, right. to make it act like Rails 3. Okay. Okay. So, but once you get up to 4.1, you there will be some refactoring. That's right. Right. Now, uh, t Thomas, you're are you, are you getting stuck on a strange error there? Yeah. I got the same thing yesterday, uh, and I just I couldn't find a you know the reason. So uh -huh. I I, uh, I just restarted RubyMine and and the the error went away. You know it was nothing. It, yeah. It, it was strange. It, it, yesterday I also got something like database busy. Uh, okay. You know, yeah. Error, so, because now it was a timeout error, so it it was kind of weird actually. Hmm. But so, but, um, by the way, for adding this tagline, are, are, shall we properly drive this um, by putting the tagline into one of the appropriate scenarios? It, it, uh, yes, well, yeah, well. I know, it seems like it seems like such a trivial thing. Oh, I can just change it, right? I can just change it in the... No, 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 I know. It's not. It's, <laughs> I, was just, I was actually just thinking more in terms of do we really want to have the tagline on every page? I... I, I I don't know. I mean, I would have thought so. Yes. I mean, I, 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 I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, it's kind of up to the client. I mean, the. I mean, I'm just looking at. I don't know. Let's uh, look at. Um, I don't know. I'm just looking at some other companies and see. Well, you can change. I mean, what they have. I yeah. guess the client said she wanted to search, but you change fine. I mean the. We, we, what we could do, we could we could have a, and either we can we, we use the navigation bar, which is a, a for me right. a natural thing to have something that is repeated on every page. Yeah. And the, the nav bar is a, is a is a good place to put it, or we put it on the on the white space just underneath, kind of delicately, right. kind of in the center. You know, just that that pops out. Yeah, I mean, I'm like for example, I'm just looking here at, I mean, the Toyota page, and they have, you know, their logo, and then they have like, all the, their brand slogan or whatever. Always a better way under underneath. Mm -hmm. And I guess if I go to some other, let's see what happens if I go to another page. Um, it's being very slow. Yeah, that they they're kind of having, they're keeping that on. But yeah. uh, Honda didn't didn't have a, you know, as I don't think it does. Yeah, I mean, I th I think. For the like immediate things, yeah, if we could just sort of slip it in there so that it's on every page, and then we can take that up with Alex next next week. Um, yeah, that I think would be the way that I would I would probably go. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, do we, do you need to start re restart RubyMine to get over that? Yeah, I um, think I think I need to do. But listen, we don't we don't need to be four people on this one. You know, it's no it's, no, that's true. We could we could we could easily split. Um, I mean, my my plan, like, uh, immediately is to get, pull down Heroku, to make sure, basically make sure I can make the whole site run on my local machine with the production database. That, that's my plan. That's my immediate plan. And I, uh, the corollary of that is I would, I would like to look at, you know, uh, you know ha having experimented with Jorge's pull in is actually review, okay, can we get this so that, you know, it's 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 ultimately in the developed branch, and everybody's got what they got what they need to move forward. Um, but so yeah, so what was the status in terms of uh, continuous integration? Continuous integration of Travis. Just, mm -hmm. uh, Is Travis happy with that? With with uh, yeah, with the um, Postgre thing, yeah. As far as I can tell, uh, because, like uh, yeah, because Travis hadn't. Well, it's got. It says the Travis CI build has passed. 
But I think Travis is running on the test thing, and I don't know that. Like, so the the setup here. Have we changed the test over to what have we got? Production I think the test. test changed over to. Yeah, as well. So it seems like Travis is, hasn't got a problem with Postgre, as far as we can tell. Gentlemen, right. I'll be with you in just one second. I just re restart my system, okay? Yeah, sure. Was that yeah. was that a concern before that it was having issues? Because it doesn't look like you changed the Travis YAML at all. No, but the Travis YAML shouldn't have to change. The Travis YAML will. Uh, I think that there was some there was some conflict or something that was then it was called co causing the build to fail. But I think that was that was independent from Travis, you know, be feeling good or bad about Postgre. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, as far as I can tell. Because so I Travis, guess Travis is set up to use that PostgreS username or whatever. Yeah, well, it will do whatever we. T I mean, basically, it'll run. See, it'll run. You know, migrate test Man, the pair. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I was saying. I was saying it. It looks like it's set up out of the box to use the PostgreS username. The R R setup. Uh, Travis. In, because he didn't change the YAML at all. There's nothing special. No, but, but I think he's not Travis, telling Postgre to do anything. No, but but Travis is not set up to use Postgre or SQLite or anything out of the box. I think what we've got with Travis is Travis is just running our app using this right. this stuff, and so huh. it, it will create whatever database. Right, but I was just I was just wondering. Oh, I get yeah. Because it, it didn't have the issue that we had. I right. Just want to say, it didn't have the issue that. It no, was, I mean, I guess there's an issue there of, of if they're setting this up, like, and they're doing the database creation. Yeah, no, I, I, sorry, you, I think you might, you're right. Actually, the it, it's, um, it's authenticated. It didn't fail. Right. I mean, as far as as far as, as to the extent that this this is you know correct, and I guess we can even go and look at the details. Um, uh, Dennis, are you familiar with Travis? Sounds like he's muted still. He is, uh, I think we did, he did he did test his audio earlier on, but he may be AFK. But anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, because if there is an authentication issue, like uh, DB Create All should have failed. Right, right. But so yeah, there I guess be a long message saying. Yeah, right. I mean, I guess what what we are. I mean, if, if it's easy to go and look at it over, um, if I, what have I got? If I get, check out Postgre, uh, and go and look at the database channel, where's it gone? So in, I always get confused because I go and look for the DB config in DB, but it's in config. There we go. Uh, SQLite, like SQLite, doesn't have users and stuff, right? No. Oh well, I'm not. It's, I'm it's sure. very much like a. Yeah. It's supposed to be used by an app or whatever. But it's an it's an interesting question there actually though. Like as you, as you say, like uh, it seems like Travis is just is taking that database YAML and doing whatever, and so I don't know if Travis is somehow pre-processing this to say right. It needs a Postgre database, and it it has to have a username Postgre, and it has right, to have yeah. a blank password. It's so a black box. I don't know whether right. Exactly that, it would it would seem like yeah they would have to kind of like on the fly have you know whatever is necessary ready. But I, you know a lot of people will be doing this. This is obviously the kind of thing they would have done and and handled lots and lots of times before. So um, hmm. Yeah, but anyway, that 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 all seems okay. Um, so I guess I was yeah. I mean, Thomas has gone off, and we'll we'll see when he comes back. And and Dennis, I guess we're not sure if he's compass mentis. Um, that's the wrong word, really, or even necessarily listening. But so I guess you and I, Michael, could just be looking at getting this first thing. So I did. I downloaded the. Um, I downloaded the a dump of the, and I was just I was just reading here about. Uh, you know, using PG Restore to try and insert it into my local right. data, data, database. So I guess I'm running here. I've got my Postgre branch. Um, I guess uh, so. 
when you set it up on Mac, what were, there, what were the issues? Because you didn't. We have other people who are using Mac, like Thomas. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like you wrote a. Did you write anything on the wiki about? I don't know that I did. It seemed to me that we didn't encounter, um, like. I, I remember you having an error or errors or something. There, there was an error, but I think it was there were just errors associated with creating that. You just had to. It was all that you just had to install the Postgre thing oh, and okay. and you know and create the user. It was it was it was there was no kind of extra libraries or this that and the other. It was just it was just the standards. You know you need the Postgre stuff. But yeah, if we do it now with Thomas when he comes back, we could um, make sure that we document it properly. Um, Obviously, we've got the video of the um, the thing. So I, I mean, like, so for example, here. So my user then on Postgre would be Postgre, and minus if I wanted to stick the, I guess I'd probably stick it in the development database. Um, so which is ls underscore development, and. Uh, so what is this supposed to do? Well, what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to do is get. So I've I've what I've done is I've taken a dump of the production data, um, and I am naughtily gonna put it on your laptop. Yeah, I mean, uh, to the extent that, that is naughty. Um, but so I can go back. I could do uh, downloads. A one four seven like that, and see what it says. Okay. Oh, right. Warning: errors ignored on restore to. Okay. But it. Okay. So that's done something. Uh, I mean, I guess I might be out of sequence on. Who knows? I mean, that's probably. I can always dump it and re restart it. Uh, but that's the production database, which might be behind. But then I can do. It didn't tell uh, you which errors were ignored, though. Uh, I don't know if they were. It says two errors were. Ignored I mean, there were some things started. here, like it said, they were, it tried to drop. A, it tried to drop a sequence that didn't exist, um, and then could not execute query. Over certain things. Who knows? Uh, but so. Then I could, in principle, do this localhost 3000, and so okay. So yeah, so this is this is me running um, on the Postgre branch with what looks like the data from the production server. So that that's kind of cool. So that I mean, yeah. As I say, for the, for the meeting on Monday, we're not sure if we're going to have. Access so, uh, so the thing I would do next potentially is pull the latest. Well, I think the next thing is, is to get the latest. So Thomas, how are you doing? You you back? Yes. Yeah. So you're just uh, running all of your tests to check. Yeah, yeah, just to see what's. Yeah. So I'm okay with everything. Yeah, yeah. So I well, while you were out, I have just um, uh, successfully, you know. I've got the production data. I, I overwrote my local Postgre database with the production Postgre database. So I have, you know, all the updated data on my local machine. Okay. Um, uh, so that 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 was fairly painless, which is good. Um, so I kind of in terms of the meeting prep, the next step would be I could I could merge in the latest stuff with. Um, Postgrade, but I assume that's going to be fairly forward and, and will just work. Uh, yeah, the key thing I think is to get just yeah this 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 tagline in. Uh, so I think Dennis has um, had connection issues or whatever is not is not with us. So we could just um, quickly look at that together with you, Thomas, with the, just the, the three of us, and uh, then we can maybe move on to some other things. Uh, you mean the uh... The tagline or the, I, the, I, the I, I think if we if we just quickly work on the tagline, we can yeah get, sure sure yeah get get through and, and be done. Uh, yeah, I'm just running the R spec tests as well. Yeah, 
do, do you want to? Uh, so we've probably got an existing scenario that would be a good place to slap in um, the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's sign in. Perhaps on, I mean, we. we I, are I think there's. We already have because there was one that was a feature related to like I want to see that look admin promoting site like look at admin promote. I'll, I'll see if I can find the right one. There's one which is specifically yeah, about promoting the brand. Site, yes. yes. Yeah, the so admin promoting site is the one. So it's like be aware of the site, and so I should see how community, and so then on line twelve we should have and I should see, and we put in the tag basically. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and and so out of interest, Thomas, now, have you done GitHub ping pong enough times now that you're feeling starting to feel uh, comfortable with it? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I, I I'm feeling that I've I've been um, uh, well, I should be doing more of it. I I feel like in the, in, in sessions recently, I haven't been doing enough of it. Uh, but yeah, if it, we, you you and I could even just ping pong this one back on back on forwards. Uh, so yeah, so do you want the, the tagline from the Yeah, what you, what 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 tagline should we use? Yeah, I think this um is this one here, search for local and voluntary and community organizations. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I was thinking this is a obviously a simple one. I was thinking if, yeah, if you want to save that and check that into the um, branch that you're on there, and I'll pull out a copy of it, and because um, I've just added you as a remote, mm -hmm. and then um, we can maybe do some more interesting ones uh, based on the Postgre, and possibly even then, I guess we could all be looking at the uh, UI. We could be looking at the UI together, or we could even look at this access paranoid thing. Um, yeah. Well. So let's let's see. So I've I've got uh, I've now I've got you as a remote. So yeah, you get push origin UI style. Can you hit tab there and you get complete or not? Not on not on branch names. Yeah, Marion was getting that. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to do git uh, git fetch Thomas. And oh, Michael, do you want to get? Some, should we try and do some like uh, three way three way stuff? Like you were doing three way with uh, Rodri and Sung the other day. Did, did that feel good or just awful? Or uh, I think some people got mixed up with it. Yeah. You know, trying to pull things when they shouldn't have been. Yeah. With the three of us, maybe it would it would be interesting to try it. Anyway, um, so I'd be interested to try it. I don't. Know, I mean, if you, uh, not not necessarily on this one. But I mean, I think uh, Michael, you've already got both myself and Thomas on the remotes, right? Um, yeah. So, so what I've done there, Thomas, is I've uh, checked out your styling branch there, uh, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do git checkout minus b ui styling, which will give me a copy of the same one that you've got, and so I should then immediately see your code here. Mm -hmm. I guess what I, what I also am interested in 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 working on. Um, is interesting. Um, is seeing how far, like some people have said to me, oh, oh, that must be terribly slow to do that thing. I guess the like for me here, this now if I in this branch, I guess it would. I still would still have to do like git fetch Thomas and then like maybe git merge Thomas UI styling. There's like these two commands, and I'm wondering if we can get it. What would be I think cool is in RubyMine if there was a button that we had. Which would be like GitHub Pong, that would just do it. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. so just be pushing these things backwards and forwards. But so if I run the, if I run this test now, it should fail. Um, I guess I, ideally, what you know, in a pure ping pong sense, you would have run it and seen it fail first on your side. But anyway, that, that, that's fail, so that's sensible. So then, and, and I have people. There's people in the one six nine two chat chat like asked or ch asking. They're saying like. How does this BDD TD thing work? When should I switch from Cucumber to um, to, to RSpec and so on? And I, I think that's it's, it is. It's so easy to get confused on that, particularly um, in some of the homeworks. Anyway, but so now 
what we want to look for really is have we got some specs that correspond to this? So this is really kind of a view thing, almost at the level of the layout. Here we go. So we've got this existing. It renders site title. So uh, render render should contain. Uh, so and I guess I'm going to go here. And interestingly, here, see if I if I do it here. So if I say it renders uh, site tagline, and I pop in the same thing here. This is actually a stronger test of like this actually means that we will because we're doing it at the application layer level. Uh, it's going to be on every page. It's going to see on every page, and but but it's but it's nice it's nice and neat there. Um, it's that's simple to put in. I mean, it raises the question of is there that's a that's because that's because uh, you're using the knowledge of how Rails is uh, conventions. Yeah. Whereas cucumber, I mean, whereas cucumber and capybara, yeah, it's any app, not just a Rails app. Right, but it, it, it although interestingly, it's sort of. I mean, I, I've now got cucumber using mechanized to test just to stand. Oh, actually, I'm kind of tempted. Uh, if I show you, uh, I've got now with this little um, thing here. I've got this little project here to kind of show BDD in the absence of any Rails. Because I think the problem is is that doing BDD with Rails gets you confused about you have to deal with Rails, right? That's you don't want to deal with that. Um, but so I've got here like this, like a little test feature here, like feature here to check com co content here. Um, and what I've got it, this will pass, right? It's basically it's only it's based on. Look at this. This is it's just my it's my I've got my um, cucumber features, and it's just testing a static HTML site that's in this like this little directory next to it. Do you see what I'm doing there? Uh -huh. So it's yeah. just it's just te checking for that. And then I've got like I took like one of our basic scenarios, right? And I re rewrote it ever so slightly for R. So it's like you know that this was this was the first scenario that we started on for the search, and then find it uh, given that I'm on the home page. And I click on elderly, then I should see this thing, and I should see this thing, and this one as well. I can just um, so this is like uh, oh is that enough failing? Hello, what's wrong there? Uh, expected Indian elder and it got oh it's just a spelling mistake. Uh, right, Indi uh, I just accidentally delete that. There we go. So that's go green now. There you go. So that passes, and like I just show you my step definitions here. I haven't even used capybara. It's just mechanized, and look, I'm just grabbing, you know, working out which is the right, working out where we are, and then it's inspecting these HTML things. But I can still click on the hyperlinks in these pages, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, yeah. so I just, I just feel like, wouldn't it be much easier to learn about Cucumber in this context, right? It would. I think. Anyway. Um, Hey, it's a, a great way to 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 show people that are yeah. It's a learning tool. I think it's a great it's a great approach. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and uh, I'm I'm going to try and use it with my HPU students this semester and maybe with the edX guys next year. We'll see. Um, so Dennis has got his internet connection has gone down. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, so I've got I've got all of my students in the HPU class just writing features uh, to like that I've, for their for their projects. I've you know told them you know write these features and scenarios, and I ha and I've been like sending them pull requests and this that, and the other. But I have this idea that I will like merge in my let me get rid of that now merge in my uh, you know basic cucumber thing with the little site and say right now do your HTML prototypes in here and actually have your cucumber things hitting the HTML prototypes mm -hmm. anyway sorry I, I just you know couldn't help but so uh, but it but it raises the question going back the, the, the play programming you're supposed to say more focused and I'm just going off on things no focus stay on target stay on target uh, Dennis is asking about the next next one uh, Monday uh, some people uh, will pair over the weekend uh, uh, watch the Skype chats. Okay. Um, everybody needs a high-powered internet the whole time. It's it's uh, it's a human right. Um, so I I so yeah I was gonna say here like we've got some of these other scenarios here. 
So we've got, which are very badly, they're very undry in Cucumber. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, we've got this, we want the About Us page is accessible from all of these different things. So it's it seems like we, we should be able to write a better Cucumber step. Like, like here, this, you know, we could have this, like, on every page. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then somehow we would have we would have a step that uh, I I don't know if we necessarily want to care about that right now, like it's it's sort of a refactoring. But you know what I mean? Like we could rewrite the step so that it took a list of you know pages somehow that it that it went went through. Well, you could meta program it probably. I'm sure there's some way to access the routes. Right, right. You could kind of look at yeah. That's an interesting that's an interesting idea. Uh, I, I I feel like that's kind of a refactoring that I that we don't necessarily want to get but sidetracked it, it would on. Be a, it, on. Actually, it, it would be good since we have elements that are uh, appearing on every page. Yes. So. No, it would certainly help if we had something like that. It would certainly help dry out these rather ugly, undried. So um, we could have a step called like when I visit the pay the site or something or. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think I think. Be afraid that it's gonna. Could make the test suite longer, like a lot longer. Uh, it certainly could. It, it certainly could make the thing a lot longer. Although it's a, it's a it's a, a va you know to the extent that there are things there are is branding that should be throughout the site. Then, I mean, I don't know. I I, I think we could be express. You know, in the first instance, it doesn't have to access the root file. There. Like just in in order to dry this thing out, what it could just do is we take a like here we take a. You know, the on every page step would just loop through a standard set of, uh, right. you know, three or four that we've mentioned. Which so it would be take exactly the same amount of time as this. It'd just be a much, much neater. But so we could, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, so anyway, I've I've got this one failing here. I'm I'm tempted to um, just send that back to you with that failing feature, uh, failing spec, partly now to do this thing of checking how fast I can get it back to you. So go no uh, what am I doing right it's over here okay well, you, so, you can use the example syntax in cucumber just oh uh which one I've seen it uh, Armando had introduced it in uh, it's not in the, it's not in local support yet but it's no in, it's in the auto grader oh right right the um yeah Where you can set up a table of examples yeah. Yeah, I think Marion explored that before. Actually, I remember saying that I was not thrilled with how it looked, but uh, I guess it's it's growing on me over time. Uh, right. Yes. Looking at. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, the, like, yeah. Ruby or, the, this this one here. So it could be like. Um, I guess this this would be something like you know uh, I should see whatsoever on. And is it's a this with the examples thing? It's basically it's gonna uh, do it through a series of. Does it for each row in that table? Right. So it's effectively you have a thing, and then it's it's gonna loop for yeah. some. And I guess the could, the examples could be specified above or below it. It's it, I guess the. I'm not sure. I just copied what I'm. On right. Right. Had it done previously. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a way to put it all in one place. Yeah. Well, let's. I guess let's complete the cycle here and um, maybe do. So I want to hear that. Can I do this? If I do git here, if I do um, uh, commit file from there, that's going to like. And then I have to comment in here. So this is like um, checking for tagline. And after commit. From what I understand, mm. uh, Go on. having uh, paired with someone a couple, maybe a month ago, mm -hmm. some more Rails no or Ruby knowledge, uh, there's a similar thing called shared examples or something in our spot. Oh, okay, right. I think right. it does something similar. Yeah, look, it's interesting. Look, I'm just, uh, the first time I've done this commit through, uh, it's got like a perform code analysis. It says, oh, right. Some files contain problems. One error and two warnings. Would you like to review them? Okay. So I think, 
I think that's telling me that I I don't want to do this through. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, the turnaround is git commit minus it, and then we got this is so like uh, spec for tagline, like so. So if I git push that, and then uh, so yeah, if we go to you, Thomas. So that's yeah. my two commands to get it over to you. So the commands that you need to do. Uh, Right. Yes. You, so you can just do git pull. Yeah, that looks like you could do that. If you, I, yeah, you could try try that. Git pull Tansaku slash. Are you in the... I don't need to. I don't know if there's a word. I'll try, try it. See what happens. I think you need a hyphen rather than a an underscore. Oh. You might have to do a git fetch. Well, I, hyphen. But try try. try. Oh, it's okay. Uh, maybe it's. Get pull, do, do um do a do a space instead of a four a slash between the two. Yeah. Try that. I have a feeling. Uh, what? Uh, that was strange. Uh, possibly you typed the password in wrong. No. Looks like you typed. You know, well, try it again, I guess. It's just just try. Like like in principle, this this could uh, this could could work, and like like you were saying, Michael, it needs to be a git fetch. But the he's, he's he's saying remote uh, uh, hang up unexpectedly. Oh uh, okay, no, I guess then right, it's, it's doing git pull. So if you do if you do a git pull origin mask, no, that would be. That's funny. Like it's we would want to be pulling from Tansaku. Oh, maybe you would need to do git pull Tansaku slash UI styling. And then UI styling, which is your your local. So yeah, do do git pull Tansaku, mm -hmm. and then to do do uh, put a slash in between those two, or you know you know what I'm saying. Like and then but then so this is like uh, and then you need a space and then UI styling again. So that's your like this. Yeah, try just try that. No, okay. Well, let, do do git git fetch Tansaku then just by itself. Maybe we can't. Uh, when you push stuff over, I'll see if I I'll see if I can find the right command combo for. Uh, let's see if that one works. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. All right. I'll tell you what I've done. I've done the wrong thing. I've done over here. I. Yeah, no, I did git push here, and I didn't. Uh, I, I should have done git push origin UI styling. Uh, it ended up. I ended up pushing the staging stuff instead. Sorry. Do you want to run uh, git fetch Tansaco again? Okay. Yeah. Now try git pull Tansaco UI styling without. No, not that. I wouldn't do that. that. Yeah. Not that. You see, I would have. I would have thought that you could just do git merge Tansaku slash UI styling now, because the pull, right, Michael, the pull does a fetch animal. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I think you can technically. Oh yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, but you could try. You could try pull try there. Try merging that. Try but that. Try, merge should work. Uh, we'll be able to do more experimental things when later on. Yeah, just hit, hit return. That that's fine there, Thomas. Okay, so now you've got it. So now, if you uh, run the, rather than running all the tests, you should just check that you've got the code update from me, which is um, this. Uh, it's in you know view like spec views layouts application dot html, etc. Yeah, so that's at the very top. Uh, yeah, so you've got that thing. So you can just run that on line fourteen. Run that. Run that individual spec, just to check that that fails. And uh, then, yeah, so, so now it would be your turn to insert that somewhere into the, the, the HTML, into the layout, I guess. So that looks like that failed for the right reason. So you're going to, I guess, 
you at the header. I'm just I happen to be looking at this on my one as well. So in order to insert this into that white space, where, do you want to just uh, uh, talk us through what you're what you're doing, Thomas? I mean, I, particularly for me because I haven't really been following the changes to the HTML. Thomas, you seem to be muted at the moment, by the way. So okay, I'll, I'll keep talking, and I will feel ignored <laughs> by you guys. Why are they ignoring me? Uh, we're we're just you know these even people. <laughs> All right, so here we go again. I just repeat myself. Uh, uh, anyways. Uh, if we want to keep it in the in the nav bar, then we 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 should put it in the header um, partial. But okay. if we want it in the in the white space underneath, then it, we might as well. Okay. Well, let's just go with application for the yeah. So that would then go. Um, so we've got the flash tag there. I see on lines twelve through fourteen of the. Yeah, but the thing is that oh, I, 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 I didn't quite understand that. I was looking at it a few days ago. I think Michael, you and I discussed it. This or perhaps you and I—I I don't know. But this flash, it, the code is actually here, you know, on line on line twelve right, right, to right. fourteen. But then on sixteen, we are rendering the header. Well, okay. It's because the header has got a, a certain it's, styling to it that pulls it up. Pulls it yeah, the top. but okay. the, but the flashes are are actually displayed underneath the header, right? Right. Right, because it's got the header. I think it's got some kind of. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just for just for consistency, it might be make sense to move them. But let's not let's not worry about that for yeah, the moment. Okay. Yeah. So if we if we would like to display the tagline underneath the the header. Yes. We, we need a, a div. A div here on line 18. Well, actually, no. We don't need that. We we need another row here on line 20. Oh, okay. Oh, re oh okay. Is, uh, uh, so we go for a row. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We go for a span on to, on another div with uh, that would be like div class span twelve or something. Yeah. yeah. Right. So this is because it. Because that's the full the, full screen, right? Yeah. So it's going to be in the white space. Yeah. Just set the banner itself, the header. Yeah. Right now it's it's in the and then we go like h one or h two or something. Mm hmm. And we go for this. Okay, great. So if we save and we re rerun that same test, uh, we should hopefully see the test that pass. Uh, and uh, it should be able to run. I, I guess the sensible thing to do there, uh, if that passes, is to kick off the whole. Um, uh, Kick off the whole RSpec thing, and maybe in a separate terminal, I would run, I'd boot up a server so that we can look at what it actually looks like. Um, but yeah. with with the, with the, um, I I kick off the the RSpec tests in the background to make sure mm -hmm. that it hasn't had any impact on any other RSpec things, and so on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Now, as if you're using H1 or H2, is there, is there, has there been a, in HTML styling a move away from using H1 and H2, or is it, I mean, because like you know, we've we've moved away from using paragraph yeah. towards div. Yeah, but actually, the H1 and two uh, is 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 uh, uh, experiencing a bit of a renaissance right now. You know, revival. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I always use them. I mean, I still use them. But, but, yeah, everything but, was done. Uh, before CSS3, everything was done with just CSS. But for some reason, lately, especially with the new frameworks uh, like Bootstrap and other, other frameworks, uh, they yeah. kinda, I feel that they they return. Yeah, I mean, does, does Bootstrap does it have a default H1 styling that it applies to? to yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, that makes that makes sense. And also, you know, it's, you you can always play around with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I kind of liked it looking like it was in the, the header. Yeah, oh yeah, the um, the rather than you know, maybe I don't know how it's going. Well, we'll, 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 see, we'll see what it looks like. Yeah. It doesn't look good now, I think, because <laughs> it's not style at all. Let's, let's see. Yeah, I guess when it was in the header, it had some of like that, like uh, see, like it had the class. It looked like button. a tag. Yeah, it looked like a tag. Yeah. So the interesting thing about this here is that still, I think we haven't lost the white space. I think we're still 
seeing the same. Oh, amount okay, of white. but that's a CSS thing. It's it's it's. Yeah. Uh, what, what happened is that this uh, this um, 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 the nav bar. Yeah. It, the default is fifty pixels, and right. when I had the the logo and the uh, yeah yeah. The, that the, was the, correct. You no, know, underneath. So, so it was like eighty or something. So yeah. I had to add here in in. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. Could, could right. you try putting it in the header? I guess. Look, what we did now is. If, uh, right. Wait a second. Here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Where are we? This one. Yo, here. Yes, main container. It said it said to margin top is fifty pixels. And right. That could easily be thirty. Okay. And then the. Um, so that'll reduce the white space. Yeah. I was I was wondering, uh, maybe give, why not give this H one thing, give it a class of brand, and see what happens. I think brand is actually. I think it's I I don't. Uh, I don't think brand will work on this one because I think brand is is. Uh, it's designed uh, to have a gray background. Yeah, it's, it's designed for 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 uh, navbar actually. But yeah, we can, we can check that. But, but yeah. Well, I was going to say you could even leave it at H one and give it the class of brand. But hey. Uh, no, that's not. Oh well, not perhaps. I would put it back in the header. But uh, well, uh, Michael, putting it yeah. in the header is like you you would like bring back the. No, you see, it doesn't work. No, but what what if you can you do H one with with the class brand? I'm just interested. Let's I try that. I try. That. So what what is your problem with the header? It's not our problem. It's the, it's Alex. He doesn't want the, uh, the the sharp line between the logo and and another gray. Oh, he wants that to be the ground. Yeah, he wants to be that like that that to be. Yeah, exactly. Now he only returns to H one. He doesn't take that. Ah, uh, okay. That's not a no. Okay. Hmm. But we we can. I mean, if, if yeah. Would well, you want to give? Is is there a quick style that you give give? I mean, we've we've re removed. I and mean, we could even remove another five pixels of white space from the. Uh, but uh. But uh, yeah. I don't know if there's a. I, there's a, I think it a, looks bad that far off. Uh, you think it that that you think it looks? You, you shouldn't. We shouldn't lose any more white space. No, I'm saying that I think that. That uh, it looks bad just being. Oh, I, I agree that the current, the current. Um, uh, I mean, that's what we sort of. I think we originally had it saying something like search organizations there or something before with that. And the, no, the 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 unstyled H1 header looks really rough. I agree. I mean, the the question no, there I mean, is even even. I don't know. It just looks weird having the tagline like in the middle of white space. Right. I mean, uh, rather than being in the header, isn't it always in the header, or am I just wrong? Seriously. Well, we were with the th certainly some of the things we were looking at in the meeting had that in the header. Um, it's um, you know where where I think it kind of there was there was something about it being in the header uh, that made it look you know kind of more uh, appropriate. But I, but I think that the um, just that that current H1 font just looks. You know, kind of, kind of silly. So, uh, you know, we'd have to see um, if uh, Thomas can work some magic w with it there that uh, just uh, uh, makes it somehow look look better. Okay, font size. But yeah, I mean, another another way to go would be to say, oh, let's bring back that because I I I thought that what with the tagline added, the you know the header with the grey underneath looked kind of you know more looked a bit better. I guess the main thing here is just is, is changing the because it feels like that that font whatever the H1 default font is doesn't really match the rest of the site. Is that? It, I don't no, what, no, it doesn't really match the rest of the site. It's the I same thing. It's the same thing that we're using here. Oh, it, it, it is. Okay. All right. Maybe just that it's yeah when it's when it's kind of bold and big it doesn't yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's. Mm. But I think I, I'm tempted to agree with Michael. There is that it ends up. Yeah, I don't know. It, like yeah, if it was if it was center aligned, that might be might be better. But it it does like 
it somehow looked, do you agree, Michael, I think what you were saying is, as part of the header, it kind of, I don't know, overall looked more part of what's going on, whereas this now, it just sort of looks like a, you know, inserted sentence at the... Right. I agree, I agree, I agree. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I think it is no. It's margin left, right, out, out. That should actually center it. Why is it not centering? Wow. There may be some other. I mean, if, 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 like if you do the, the, you want to do the inspect elements in Chrome there, and we'll see that all the styles that are being applied to that, um, Thomas. Yeah. When it's in the header, it looks more like part of the. Yeah, I know what I could do perhaps, but yeah. I don't know if it's if 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 the client would like it. I, since since she, the, Alex doesn't want it to be below, I could put it above the the, the logo. Mm. Yeah, I don't know that that would sort of strike me as kind of kind of weird. I mean, I, I guess I guess now we're into the you know dangerous. We could like burn hours going backwards and forwards on on these little things, couldn't we? Um, yeah, for some reason those margins don't seem to be. So what did the client think? Well, so Rachel, I think she, you know, seeing the the tagline in the header, seemed to be like, oh yeah, that's kind of nice. I, and I think she's not bothered by the hard edge anyway. I mean, I think Alex, what he really wants is for the logo to be to fill the entire width of the screen. Right, I think he doesn't want it breaking, at the, you know, at the edge where it currently is. Uh, necessarily. Well, you mean here at the edges on the left and right? Y yeah, like I think he was imagining it as being kind of like that it runs from the extreme. But as I'm saying, it's like he he kind of basically missed the boat this week to kind of really have input on that. So you know, I I, th I think we can't magically kind of integrate all his desires. Um, I mean, I guess. At this stage, superficially, I, I would be tempted to just bring... I mean, if we are going to have a tagline, uh, then we should... I, I, I'd say we've got two choices here now, really. Is, is one, we just remove the tagline and, you know, reduce the level of white space and say, right, we're just going ahead without a tagline. Or we put the tagline in the, you know, like the brand space, as um, you had done before, uh, Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any, any thoughts on the, those two... Approaches here. What's right? the brand space? The the what you look like with it in the header where there's a bit of grey of the header below. Yeah, the, below I would do that. But... Yeah. I mean, less less controversially is less controversial we, is just we can, not. We can try that now, just so we see. You see yeah, line four, well, if you look at my line fourteen, you see that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the class. Okay, so if you just put something in there. Uh, right. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we can we can actually put it there. Yeah, uh, like this. And but the thing is that now with the changes to the that we've made before, see, yeah. it ends up really high up because everything is. Oh, okay. We, well, we used we use the we have two containers overlapping each other. That's that's yeah. you know that's the the solution I came up with to sure. to have this login. Uh, you know, float above the the, the logo. So right, right. Uh, so what we would need to do now is to actually just remove this. No. Well, I. Oh shit. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, X like this. Yes. And I think, yeah, okay. Okay, right. So that goes back to yeah, right, right. Is that what it looks like in the client meeting? Yeah, I think it. it I think it did. I think did we have a little bit of extra space at the extreme left of the line? Did it start exactly there, or you mean on the log here on the search, or yeah, on on the on the the search? I, I mean, actually, I've still got the. One. Oh no, no. I think it was. Yeah, that's what it sort of looked like in the. Yeah, I mean that. Uh, the, I've still got the the one. I mean, if you look at my screen here, this is uh -huh. what we were, this is what we were looking at in the client meeting. 
Yeah. Uh, and what's the difference? I don't. I don't think there is any. I think. I think yours is the the same. I think that just the the resolution is maybe. Uh, M- Michael's. I think looking at it and seeing the resolution being slightly different. I guess. Yeah. Um. No, that's it's it's it, it's the same. Um. I mean, I see kind of what he was talking about with the, the hard line. Yeah, right. I'm not bothered about it at all, actually. I think it's it, it, this looks better than the, the, the other solution. It's my yeah, personal yeah. opinion. I, 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 th- I think what we should, like, if, the, if that's an easy point to stick in the standard, what, 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 um, what I'm worried about there is do we have, did you remove the tagline separately from the... the no, actually, right now it's underneath it's the hidden. number. I, I, well, would remove it, yeah. I, I would say, like, why don't we go, uh, like, remove the tagline that's hidden underneath, just because that's, you know, kind of cruddy, co- cruddy code that we're not using. Like, uh, yeah, bl- blow that away. Um, let's, let's... Look what uh, happens what, now. You see what happens? Oh, okay, because that, that's the 30 millimeters, right? You wanna... Yeah, but that's that's why I had this. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it makes perfect sense. That's why I should go back to the sixty. Whatever. Well, I don't think that's that's. Isn't it the? It's the. It's not the tagline. But that tagline does not be. That, that style's not being applied now, is it? That dot tagline. It's the um, the fifty millimeters on the 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 whole. Oh, header. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, here you are. Is it, is it that one? I, I thought it was... Uh, I wasn't that one. Yeah, that could be a little bit... Uh, yeah, more, more space. No, I'd, give, I'd give it five more pixels at least. Five? No, yeah. ten. That's no, either way. Again, the same mistake, for God's sake. How well, you can just, what, why don't you delete that whole, that whole yeah, well, tagline we're not even using, so... Uh, Let's let's prevent you making any more of this. Uh, so okay, that's yeah. forty-five. So yeah, and then I would guess like I, one of the things I noticed is that that, that some SEO stuff uh, is sort of appearing in in the, the uh, if I were you, I'd just go back to the, the yeah. Header. We can remove that. It was just you know. It's oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just just because it comes up as you do a mouse over. I would just replace that with tagline at the moment. Like if it, if it needs to have a title, maybe does, does it even need to have a title? Probably not. Well, for for I think I I was taught that the uh, Google bots are using titles on Ahrefs, uh, you know, to index a page. So everybody oh, says that it's a good practice to put. Okay, yeah, you just have, yeah, I have the yeah, that's fine. That's that's good. You have the title. Is it? That's great. Yeah, I was just um uh you know the some SEO stuff and being looking at it. But that's great. Okay, so what I would do then is, having saved all of that, is I'd run all of the, uh, is, is rerun the R specs, and just make sure that, in principle, the, um, you know, uh, the changes that we've just made haven't haven't obviously broken any other ranges of functionality. So so run run R specs and uh, and cucumber, and then, yeah, uh, we could. If you push that back to me, we could. So this, this, and assuming that that all passes, we could have the refactoring step here, which I think we've probably got maybe the space and time to have. Uh, uh, Everything is running smoothly so far. Yeah, we could. We could have a refactoring step. Um Yeah, I could look at these. I guess it would be good practice to be entering the refactor, doing a refactor thing, and then it'll be time for coffee, maybe. Oh, I kind of bolted my lunch. 
and so on. So the tests were passing. Yeah, uh, that's oh, and, and and the cucumber as well. Yes, sir. Great. Do you want to uh, yeah commit and and push and I'll grab that onto my side and do the refactor step. So you could just do git commit minus a minus m, but anyway. Yeah, I know. Next time. Mm. I keep forgetting that as well. I'm an old man right now, you know, Sam. No, I'm, I, it's, same as me. <laughs> I, I'm about to. In, in, the, the 24th of November is my birthday, and I will be 42. Oh, really? Oh, mm -hmm. well, I, uh, I will be 42 in May. Seven years. <laughs> Seven years? No. No, no. Uh, when, when are you going to be 42, Sam? In May. In May, oh, so we are almost. Uh, we're, yeah, we're a very similar age. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Um, tagline. Mm, uh, okay, that's enough, right? Yeah. I I think you need to get pushed. Um, Where am I? Okay. Oh, yes, so you do that, and so I do get. Now, see, I wonder if I can I. What did I do previously? I did. You did git fetch first. First. I did, but I'm. It feels to me like that it give fetch Thomas, and then I. I think you can do get pull Thomas. Wow. It feels right. I should be able to say, I get want to pull Thomas, and then UI I want pull Thomas. Uh, UI styling. That should work. But okay. Oh, it, it looked like it did. Yeah. So that's you know, for Pong in principle there. That's the single command, right? We don't have to do fetch and merge. If we can just get that mm. the right command, we just grab it. So then, locally for me, I want to do just updated everything. Yeah. Cucumber. Yeah. Um. When you when you paired with the dentist the other day, Thomas, he was just observing, right? Uh, yeah, mostly. But he he gave some some inputs on on the uh, uh, on the t uh, we were writing our spec tests, right, Michael? Right, right. Yeah, and so after you left, Michael, we ended up actually using uh, XPath. Yeah, I thought you may have to. Yeah. And uh, and I also changed stuff. a little bit, so I, I didn't use a form after that. I just used a anchor with a button class. So so I I yeah I cha I checked for links. Well, we can we can talk about it when we mm -hmm. on that later on. Some other. But he was he was he was cool. Yeah, I don't know. Although he's, I mean, he's a good guy. He's just, uh, just finished, you know, twelve-week intensive course at Makers Academy, and they've done, you know, the whole Rails. Yeah. So what did you? I just had a question, Sam. What did you get an email? What yeah, that was, oh, that's that's from Sebastian Thrun. Um, I right. mean, you know, like not like he picks me out. I mean, I think it's part of a mass email to like every. Yeah, right? uh, yeah, as was. I think he's quit now. Um, right. But the right. interesting thing there, I was just going to say in the tech talk is, um, um, uh, Adasti is. Going to offer like personal tutors for yeah, like, yeah. hundred five a month or something. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, I mean, you know, that they're. I I was really impressed with how Udacity executed with their kind of built-in coding environment. I think it's still uh, very impressive. So you know, they'll probably blow, blow us all out of the water. Um, okay, so I think all of my. Is this now saying no tests were found on? For me here, what's going on there? Weird. Uh, someone was, someone was uh, had uh, pinged me about it. 
said he was right. wondering if this was actually going to be taken seriously by by, by who? By universities? By the government? Companies or anyone? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think they're pretty serious. I mean, wh whether it, it succeeds or not is another matter. I'm having, I can't run my R specs for some reason. I'm getting a bug segmentation. So thing. is Sebastian Throne involved with it, or is he? he he's, just... the, he's the CEO of, of Audacity. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, he started it. It's his, it's his baby, yeah. basically. I'm going to have to quit Ruby Mine there for some unknown. Hmm. Oh, it's a pain. Uh, the QQ, the, the R specs all passed on yours. Yes, and I'm running it, it again actually, just to make sure. I did. Oh, the other thing is, I managed to get the um, debugger working in Ruby Mine, um, oh. which I was quite pleased about. But that not for local support. I think there are some some sort of conflicts with local support. Um, Yeah, they they are running. Yeah, I think. Oh, that's really weird. Note: You may have encountered a bug in the Ruby, Ruby interpreter or extension libraries. Am I in the? I mean, let me just try running it from the. Uh, which version of Ruby are you on? Oh, wait a second, I just have to ask, answer my phone call. Uh, Thomas? Hello, Elder King. Hello. Good or not? Okay, it runs on the command line. Hmm. That's a pain. Ugh. Try reinstalling Ruby out debug from the terminal. Hmm. We're talking about that's hmm. well anyway the tests are passing from the oh that's what a pain can I reinstall the I don't want to completely reinstall all the gems and stuff ugh hmm well the thing that I was like they are all passing, at least from the command line. Uh, the thing that I was potentially there is like the step that we often forget to do, which is refactoring. So I guess the thing here would be to refactor this so that we had some examples in here like this. So if I grab an example of that. Um, I'm sorry, I just. No problem. Uh, like this, so so we would have like I don't know page, and I've got like home page, and let's just start like that and so this would then be you know given I am on the page like this so I could potentially run just that it's going to be a pain if I can't pinpoint run individual RSpec tests from within the um, Ruby mind but let's see what's going on here uh, go on with you pass or oh, pause error though doesn't like what have I done here? <coughs> oh, it needs to have qu 
quotes around there. Okay, uh, is that right? It's interesting, I get a different, the syntax highlighting in that I've got here in RAG is different from that that I'm getting in local support for some reason. That seems odd. I have pages like a restricted. Do you, you see the, the difference? Like it's picking up. I don't know if there's some additional Cucumber N thing that supports the features. Oh, are we, are we working on that? Oh, you're trying to do the examples. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, I mean, my, uh, my, Michael, you're also in RubyMine. You get the highlighting like this for the examples. Uh, let me open up. I think maybe I, I don't know, this is like I'm gonna go open that project. Mm -hmm. This is the thing about you know the factoring, and then find out something just doesn't. Uh, could it could it be that this step is not uh, defined? Uh, it's possible, but I would have thought that it's, um, I would have thought it would give me a different kind of, I don't know, or maybe it's like, I shouldn't have this one. But you had quotes on the other, in the other project. Yeah, the, the, there are quotes on the other one, but this is, um, I'm thinking about the underlying step that it matches, because in this one it's like the underlying step is expecting quotes, but if I'm on the home page, then it wouldn't expect it. But I don't know if this is um, related to my other error that I'm getting here, uh, that it's just RubyMine is balking on me, which will be a huge pain if that's the case. But I, I was asking um, Thomas which version of Ruby you're on. Like, I'm on this, like, uh, you know, 39, I'm on 193392. Uh, I'm on uh, 54321. <laughs> I don't... No, that's not Ruby mine, of no, Ruby. Oh, oh Ruby. Uh, I'm on uh, 1.9.3. And then P four four eight. Yeah, you're you're slightly ahead of me in the Ruby. I I don't I don't think that's necessarily an issue, but um, uh, I know I, yeah, here it's it's saying like it says found examples expected one of comment doc string row scenario scenario outline step tag. Found examples when expecting one of. Oh okay, I think I know what it is. I think this has to be scenario outline. Like this. Ah. Let's see. The, all of the, all of these have got scenario outline. There we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to fight with my Ruby line to get it open. Okay, so that seems like that's that's worked. I want to con it now. Given I'm on the home page, have we got? So we've got some other, for example, we've got charity search page, new charity page. So I could go back into here and do charity search page. Uh, oh. Okay. Charity search page. What was I just seeing? New charity page. So that now should be, yeah. So now that I've switched over to, to scenario outline, it. Like so. 
So, we've got a refactoring there. Let's see if that works. Okay, there we go. And that ran reasonably fast. So that's a, that's a, that's that's okay. As a refactoring, uh, what, what did we say? We're doing. Looks good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess there is a question of. Uh, <laughs> it feels like all of these. Well, I'm on the so and so page. Should just be. Um, I mean, it's it, we, we've got like lots of other ones that you know be to be on the charity page for so and so and be on the edit page for so and so. But I think maybe we would leave that there for the moment. Uh, so I should I could kick off the rest of the cucumber features. And uh, yeah, that that sort of potentially wraps that up. Sorry, I was just fighting with a uh, Ruby mine. I had checked out that branch that the, uh, what's his name, Robert had done? TA or? Uh, Robert Marks? I think that was a, he had done a branch to run. Right, right, oh, to so run that. It was, yeah. It was all breaking, and then I realized I was on that branch because I didn't have any, uh, a private repository. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got all of my cucumber green. I was wondering if it will now let me run my R spec. Let's see. But uh, yeah, weird. I can't run my R spec from uh, Rubenmine suddenly. That seems strange. I don't know if I ran it. I, maybe I didn't run them. Can I run them individually? That's an interesting question. Uh, but so, uh, assuming that, I guess the sensible thing now is having done that, the sensible thing would be to merge that into develop and get that all the way out to um, production even, and then maybe we can break and come back and look at Postgre. Um, yeah. Just if I if you have problems with RSpec, I can pull that from you and. And I can yeah, run. no, I can run it from the command line, no problem. Oh, so, okay. So, so no big deal. Just uh, I can't seem to run. At least I can't run in batch in. Um, well, and I can. Oh uh, well, okay. And I can run individual R spec tests in um, but not the batch R spec, which maybe I haven't done for a while. So maybe there's. I mean, and that maybe is since I started playing around. I I did have a a branch where I was parent playing around with adjusting the gem file for um, the debugging, although. I don't think you know, I'm still on gem debugger there and so on. Mm. Anyway, woo. Can you just uh, try running it? What, what's the error? I did you not see it from before? It's like this no, massive. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's like you, it's like uh, I, a kind of low-level Ruby error that I've never seen before. It's like a segmentation fault. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, like very low level. Um, but it runs on the oh. command line. But no, I. Yeah, but, but, it just now I just did it. It runs. I mean, okay. segmentation fault is like it, yeah, no, I know. Wrong memory and stuff. Right, right. Yeah, it's I mean, I haven't memory. seen those since I was programming in C. Yeah. Anyway, and it, but yeah. it says it says it passed now. So it, it's I get cosmic ray or something. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so that's looking good. So we we've done a nice. Uh, yeah, I've noticed uh, just as a. General thing I've noticed sometimes running tests through Ruby mine can be a little temperamental. Yeah. Uh, and then you so go to the command line and everything's okay. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So this is like, um, it's not really drawing it, but making a cucumber feature uh, test more than one page. Because we, we haven't seen it failing from different things, so. But anyway. Uh, Git push um, origin UI styling. So uh, I guess now actually I could just rather than going through a whole pull request thing, I could now do git checkout develop, and then I could do git merge UI styling and pull in 
those things. Ah. Oh, I hate Vi. Okay. So that's those changes that we just made. Uh, I could then here do uh, Rails S and kick off those specs there. I could go over here, look at localhost. Now, and I, right, interesting, so I've got the separate, so this is now the, my original, okay, so this is what it's going to look like, and we're going to push out. Yep. Yep. Um, so, assuming that the test, so the R spec is good, um, let's do cucumber. It would be nice to have, like, an, an integrated output from just, like, you know, do, do all, do I put on cucumber and... It is possible. Yeah. You can set up custom. Right, we could set up a custom configuration on here that would, I don't know, I guess, because it's funny that it asks you, like, of these different things. Yeah, anyway. There's a yeah. there's a thing to run general rake tasks, I think. The, oh, okay. the only the only downside is uh, you won't get the uh, nice formatted test yeah. output. Well that's that's what I'm in town for, so anyway, so I'm gonna check out staging there. Uh, in town for what? I mean that that's what that, that, that's the whole point of using Rubemind is to get the nicely formatted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna git merge develop into the staging machine. I'm going to um, uh, git push origin staging. I think I'm. Yeah, that stuff is is uh, built over top of. Yeah. I guess it, it somehow a part a special code to right. interface with the testing. Yeah. So I'm then gonna push this out to the master. Um, okay, which might take a, a a moment. I guess while it's doing that, I, now I'm on staging. I might as well kick off the same things again. Uh, so that's going to be a Heroku deploy. So yeah, I mean, we could. Uh, I think if this and if this looks alright on staging, I'm just going to. I think I'm going to take it to, to production. Um, so, but then we could come come back around on. I guess sen sensibly that this thing different things to do. I I. Let's see, put it in a. That anymore. Uh, so the, the things. So the one off. This is like after full deployed to production. The things to do um, is I could like I I should merge um, uh, latest develop into Postgre, and that will give me a local setup that can run with the production data. Uh, uh, another thing to do would be to, to after that, we could, so then, we could um, experiment with merging Postgre into develop, but that seems like that's maybe not sensible to do until after Monday. Uh, I mean, Thomas, I mean, if, if you're, we could, what, while I'm sort of doing this deploy in the background, you could easily be. Um, tr we could try and get your Postgre configured if that was something you were interested in doing. Uh, I have. I, I need to go, go out and meet up with my wife soon. So. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, let, let's not start that now. But I would need some some help. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that can happen. You know, that's that's installed, installed, okay. You know. Yeah. Is is that you probably done for the day then now, Thomas? Yeah. Probably. Perhaps yeah. I'll be back for a little while tonight. Yeah. No, that's fine. I mean, I, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna be pairing for another couple of hours. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, so if you're about in later, but either way, no worries. We, you've done lots of great stuff today. Um, bum, bum, bum. But do you, I, I was, I was while I was having lunch, you know, I, I, mm. I felt like the urge to install Postgres on my machine, and sure. I ran into some troubles. So, yeah, yeah. But I, I definitely would need some some help, and you, you've done it on the Mac before. So. Yeah, we, we we did it, and uh, I mean, there's actually a video of us doing it. But yeah, the, I mean, basically, the the Mac, both myself and Sung, did it, and the 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 issues were, I think, merely with the configuration of Postgre. I was I was saying to Michael earlier on. I, I was having trouble installing the gem because he he, he complained oh. that there was some something wrong with the, some libraries. 
Uh, oh, okay. We I don't think we had that problem, but uh, yeah, we can we can look at it together when, whenever. Um, uh, I'm just running the other thing would be to do uh, deleting items uh, for access paranoid uh, thing. Okay. Well, what's your availability looking like, Michael? Can I get some time? Yeah. Um, so I think cucumber is good there, and our specs good there, and we've deployed to, um, this is now deployed to staging. As I was reflecting, I don't know if you guys know, there was this big, the edX had a big, they kind of broke all the external order graders with their weekly production release. Um, and I was, I was sort of saying, yeah, well, hey guys, if you want to come over and like learn about software engineering, there we do a course on that. Um, <laughs> Which um, you know is sort of cynical. Um, I, I think they're they're all working very hard. I have just been reviewing some of the edX code. I think I mean they they're definitely. I mean they, they, they've got like um, all of their stuff in, in in vagrant. You know like they've got a big open source community kind of effort going on. Um, I think um, I I don't know I don't know what their system has in the way of tests. So I mean that's uh, something to look into. Okay, so so uh, we've got the staging. Um, Looks good. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, that flash seems kind of redundant, really. There. Yeah, we need to upgrade those flashes too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of looking looking pretty good to me. I would say time to take there, that. So, there's there's something wrong with the flash CSS because he adds um, a margin bottom. And and uh -huh. the white space is, is fairly is really big. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well I'm I'm tempted to push uh what I want to do there is now get check I mean yeah, I guess, you know the the ideally we would have an even more rigorous period of testing and staging, but we've kind of been through quite a lot of things. I'm gonna check out check out master here and get um merge staging. Uh, so this uh, hopefully should get some of your things into master, uh, Thomas, and you'll be reflected in the Git uh, Ooh, contributions. It's a big day for me. Yeah. Me How too. Right. Uh, um, oh, Michael, I mean, you, you're, I think you're the second highest committer you now. Um, so I think I can just do now Git push. I think so. For a long time, I think it was some pretty, but I think you've overtaken him. As what are, what are, you, are you the first? Or? I believe I am. Um, <laughs> On the back of the scaffolding? Or? Probably. Uh, yeah, if we look at... Yeah, here, here's the... There we go. I guess it's kind of unfair, because you get... Every time someone issues a pull request, you get a commit. I don't um, know that I do, actually. I don't know that I do. I, 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 I was saying it was... Un, I was thinking it was... Because I've noticed, like... Because you know how you have your GitHub activity, like your contributions right. or whatever. And I know there was like periods where I was like doing all these pull, like I was I was merging all these pull requests, and I had like was like there's no activity, and I was like, hey, I've been I've been on the GitHub site, I'm doing important work here, and it's not being reflected. But I think only actual commits uh, end up. Uh, you I, know. I thought like every time you do a pull, I thought it's yeah. merging this branch into that branch. And you got but maybe they have a thing that doesn't count this. Maybe, yeah. I, I, um, I feel like I wasn't getting credit for that. But maybe I, th th that may have changed, or yeah. But my, my, my contribution graph is now looking, you know, pretty. Uh, What's this down here? Okay, it says I pushed six commits. To no, that's not it. Guess you'll have to push it. Oh, I haven't yet. Uh, so if I do git uh, push origin master, there we go. Right. So that yeah, that's the thing that I maybe haven't done. Uh, git push origin staging. Oops. That's a probably the, the, the. I should probably make it so that the a push to Heroku automatically pushes it to GitHub as well. Um, because those can get nastily out of sync, actually. But so I assume this one. So uh, Rodri's in there now. So 
Oh, there's another right Thomas. Now. Thomas, see you. Oh, are. here I am. Here hey. I am. <laughs> there you are. I'm on the. Hey, hey, you're, on, you're on the board. Already. You're on the board. Yeah. I mean, you see, almost like this. You know, some version of this page would be cool to display within the actual site itself. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if you went to here and it like had team. Like. I think. I was thinking about it while you were, you know, on, on clients' meeting. If, if yeah. she's having a demonstration of you're going to have a demonstration on Monday, we should definitely get this done by Monday, you know. So uh, yes. Although I think that the people in, um, uh, you know, the meeting on Monday are, are are not well. Yeah. I mean, they're not like likely to be hiring. Uh, they're, they're kind of, well, you I know, don't know. As, as long as they see your face and your name, that's good marketing. Yeah, that's no, it's true. It's true. I mean, it would be nice to have. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have shown this this view before in other when we presented to technical groups, like what we're doing. I've shown this view to show the different, you know, and said, "Oh, look, this person's in India, and this person's in the U.S., and so on and so on." Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. So that's and well, actually, we're we'll going to actually check the production server, which um, is, of course. Uh, how do you have 9,631 Just He's been busy. That, well, you mean that, that that's, that's like... Line of code, or...? No, I think that's just changes. Isn't that the, the, the amount of lines of codes that you've added, and you deleted 2,900? It's like 166 commits to, to the individual ones. Yeah, and the merge pull requests are also shown as my mm, mm. I Because I think this, this, you know, it's like 91. Yeah, every time and... someone, yeah, it, your merge is shown, merging branch UI styling into developers. Oh, okay. There's a pull request you get. Oh, maybe, so maybe it, it is, it's, it's hitting it here. It just maybe in my activity graph it doesn't come up. But yeah, here I guess. I'm, I'm uh, you know. Anyway, but we all know that we can ignore me. It, it's the people, you know. You guys slaving away. You're a true leader. So well, no, I, I, you know, it's. Um, I, you. I, I have to, uh, you know, it's it's all about you guys, really. That's mm. uh, that's the key. Uh, what, what what do they say? Humble in in victory and. Uh, magnanimous uh, in defeat. Gracious in defeat. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I well, you know, I, I love working with you guys, and and I just hope we, I wish I wish we could like we were talking about Thomas, you and I were talking about earlier today that you know I just. It would be nice to carry on expanding the community so that there's, you know, uh, an ongoing, ever increasing pool of cool people to code with. Right? Uh, so there we go. So actually, we've got that. That's out on production and um, looking like the it's it's kind of working uh, in some sense. And yeah, great. Go. All right. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a coffee then, and uh, yeah, Thomas, I'll, I'll, you know. Uh, yeah, perhaps I see you later tonight if if you guys are around. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how it goes, and um, otherwise I'll, I'll see you on Monday. But uh, yeah, do do um, anything you do, do it online. That's what I always say. Um, Absolutely. And uh, Michael, yeah, I guess I will. What will I do? Shall I? I'll probably shut this. Oh, I'll I'll stop the broadcast and then I'll, I'll leave the hangout running, and maybe we'll create a new one in in ten or something. Yeah. What were you thinking of doing? Uh, well, that was well, that was another thing to talk about. That here, I mean, I I definitely need to merge. I need to check that this I've got the, all this latest thing will work with the Postgre production data on my local machine because that's that needs to be working for Monday. And then there, I mean, we could say, oh, we're bored of local support. We could go and do other stuff. I guess I'm. I do need to delete these items. I I did start a little stub this morning with. Um, uh, with Thomas looking at Axis Paranoid, and there's kind of like a nice little. Um, there's a fairly simple loop there um, that that we could just do as a sort of a pick, GitHub ping pong if you're interested, or something yeah. completely different. Yeah. What do you feel like doing? Uh, I mean, that might work. Uh, or yeah. auto graders, or yeah, depending well, on yeah. time. Looking at. We'll see how we go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, let, let's come back. Let's come back in ten. Of Rails yeah. four or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, I'll, I'll see you in about 10. All right. I'll see you later, guys. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. Great work. Bye for now.